this afternoon is full of inspirations and we're going to go all along the path that has taken us down here successfully and looking at what happened but also looking forward all the innovation paths that we have ahead and that we are about to conquer. I would like to start by thanking all our sponsors in this celebration of the Genexus community. And we would like to start with a, a, a very important person. Uh, his theories had had an influence on modern management. At Genexus, we've learned from him the principles of uh, uh, entrepreneurial transformation and a healthy and constructive entrepreneurial culture. Dr. Ishak at Isis or Adisis is the founder and president of Adisis Institute. Uh, he has uh, had the highest world and international recognitions. He's going to be talking about the key of success for any uh, company. His way of thinking has revolutionized the way we understand management. A round of applause for him. para invitarme a compartir con ustedes una metodología que tomó 50 años. I would like to share with you, thank you, Nicolás, and I'd like to share with you um, in the field, not the statistical studies, but working in the field with uh, people and checking uh, what work is done. We've got 40 minutes uh, to present to you this methodology and what's the key uh, for success for any organization at a company level. Uh, there are many companies that grew a lot thanks to this methodology. There are companies that uh, grew by $50 billion. Now, what's this methodology? Let's see. We all agree that there is a change. I haven't said anything new. It started with a big bang, and it went on. Now, what happens when there are changes? Well, there are problems. And why are there problems? What's a change? Well, it's something new. And what can we do about it? It's that if there was a, a, an intersection in the, the road, and uh, shall I take the path going to the right or the one going to the left? So uh, it's complicated. I don't know. Let's wait and see. We're not going to decide now. And have you have you decided, Guy? What how what have you decided? Stay where you are. That's the worst decision because everything is is changing the, the the world doesn't say we're going to wait for you until you are ready well even if you are on the right road if you don't move the train will run you over and you'll have to decide so you always have to decide when there are changes you have to make decisions so much better to make decisions there. Well, perhaps it's not a ch problem. Perhaps it's an opportunity. Because this problem is not only yours. It's a problem that all the industry shares. Uh, we're talking about AI. Now it's an opportunity. Because with everyone's problems, those who can change, who can manage change better and more quickly, will have an advantage, and the others will lie behind. And you will move forward. This means that every change can be an, either an opportunity or a problem. That's why it's in interesting to see that in Chinese, the word problem or threat or opportunity is the same word. 
and I've changed it and I've translated it to English, o por threats. Uh, in Spanish, it's o por menazas. And so we're not talking about problems from now onwards. We're talking about o por threats. And it's for you to decide whether it's an opportunity or a threat. It's your decision. If you manage it well, it's an opportunity. If you manage it wrongly, then it's a threat. You decide. You decide. You are in control of the situation. And that is why whenever there is a change, you always have to look out and see what's the problem, what's the opportunity, what's the opportunity, what's the problem or the threat. Because when there are opportunities, there are problems. Because if you manage your opportunities badly, then you'll get a problem. Now, if you manage the problem well, then it's an opportunity. So it all depends on how you manage it. Now, what do you mean? Well, there are problems. And how are we going to manage them correctly so that they become an opportunity? And the, and the question is how? That's important. Where does the problem come from so that you understand it and know how to solve it? Where does it come from? Why has it changed and caused problems? You all know better than I do. The, uh, this world is full of systems. Uh, we are full of systems. Our body is a system. A company is a system. A country is a system. Um, a marriage is a, is a system. Every system has subsystems, and every subsystem has a sub, 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 subsystem. And whenever there is a change, the subsystems don't change as fast as the first change. Take the Take take the the, 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 the the example of a, of a company. What happens with marketing? How long does it take to change sales? You have to understand and train and so on. How long does it take to change information, particularly accounting? You should look long enough. Oh God, a long time. How long does it take? to change human resources, human capital, the attitude, the behavior, the culture, oh God. What does it mean? It means that there is this integration. Now, whenever there is a change and there is this integration, what can we learn? Whenever you have a problem, you must wonder What's falling apart? What's changed? What has changed? So that you understand where the problem comes from. What's changed? What's falling apart? Uh, suppose you take a car and uh, it isn't working. You take it to the garage and uh, and uh, what do they do? They look for what's falling apart. If you have a disease, you go to the doctor, well, what's falling apart? What's changed in your body? And so to solve problems, if all the problems come from this integration, what's the solution? Tell me, what's the solution? Integration, of course. Not everyone understands that. Let me give you an example. My friend Trump, he wants to solve problems, but what is he causing? He's causing more disintegration. He's uh, causing a, a, a problem that is even worse. Is that clear? Look at my hand. Of any church, any religion, all the saints have their hands like that. What do you see here? You see different fingers all together, close together. Which one is the most important one? Many people think it's this one. And that's why all culture, you know, point with their fingers like that. No. To start with, uh, for an established company, it's not. Which is the most important finger? This one. Why? 
because in that way it integrates the hand it integrates integration is the solution and and there are some people who say well no in order not to have problems we have to stop changes you can't there are many people who want to stop changes there are religious fans let's stop changes and they kill people and people die but they can't stop changes because this is started with a big ban and you can't stop the time it doesn't exist so what should we do we must learn how to manage change with integration let's see how in order to be successful what is it that you need you need results in the short term and that's easy it has to be continuous continuous what else do we need to have I'm not going to tell you what do you think we need oh we need talent we need money technology I learned it from my mother and then I feel proud of this my mother wants me to be successful to have another PhD and my mother was looking at me she took my hand in her hand and said okay but how about your health that is the most important thing a company that has no health <laughs> cannot grow and have long-term success if you fall ill nothing is worth the while when we all toast to health but what is the most important thing as leaders in companies what is the most important to maintain the health of your company the uh, same you do in your family what is it that you do with your kids you want them to be mentally healthy physically healthy the health of a country is the health of its companies and they are integrated diseases are disintegration health is integration when we have doubts about the conduct of a person the person is not behaving well what do we say in English he's falling apart which means he's disintegrating and when we are very impressed with a person oh he's he has it all together this company has it all together this country has it all together and what do you mean by that what is the secret integration how do we achieve that tell me how do we achieve that well there is change and there are upper threads let's do something I took the word lead or leadership because it's politically correct today the words change it started as administration so we call master in business administration because they decided then that administration was not good so they chose management and then they said no management no longer runs executive education leadership the words change because we have new phenomena and I want to tell you that we must change the phenomenon hope so forget that we are working in a school to um, organize MBA courses we are doing things wrong if you want to manage change you have to lead 
and I taught many, many students how to make decisions. You need to decide well. There are good decisions in finance, in human resources. You have to decide, decide, decide. What do uh, graduates do? They become consultants and they decide. But in order to manage, deciding is not enough. What else do you have to do? You need to implement, of course. Implement. The secret for success is not just in the decision, it's in the implementation. To make decisions is easy. How many of you decided yesterday to start on a diet? I did it a hundred times and look at me. Where's my hair? Implementation. Now listen to me. What leads you to take good decisions and then have a poor implementation? And how can good implementations cause poor decisions? I will try to explain this. It's very, very difficult to make good decisions and then implement them. It's very difficult. It seems easy, but it's not. To make decisions, I must have an open mind, learn what do you think, what does he think. We must make good decisions. To implement, I don't want more ideas. I want to go ahead. Shut up and do it. Close your head. What, you have to know when to open, when to close. If I make decisions with a closed head, you will make poor decisions because you're not listening to others. You're going to be like a dictator. I can predict that, uh, a good manager because of the size of their ears and their mouths. And there are big mouths like Trump with a very small ear. Inter implementation can be good or not. It's over there. How do we achieve that? Let me start. Normally, we start with a decision. Let us decide, and then we'll think about how to implement it. But listen to me. No, no. First, you start with implementation. Sounds a little bit strange, but I'll explain. What is the problem that we have? What is it that we need to solve? Who do I need to solve it? Because I can make a decision, but if nobody invo gets involved, if nobody cooperates, what will I do with my decision? This is why some people go to consultants. It costs millions of dollars. At some mistake, they recommend you to do this or to do that. And what happens in the end? Tell me, what happens? In most cases, nothing happens. You just waste your money. They recommend a race, um, a race horse, and then they get a camel with three legs. That doesn't work. No. So let's start over there. Why are you suffering? Make a list. Something is not enough. What is causing the problem? I have it. I have to solve it but I have to control what's going on. Then, who, who do I need to solve the problem? Sometimes I need different things. People who suffer and not the cause of the problem. People who cause the problems uh, and are not suffering from the problems. And what we need to solve uh, doesn't know what's going on sometimes. Isn't that so? To solve problems, I should ask myself, 
who do I need to solve this problem? Who should I involve? What do I need? Mistake number two, three, four. To solve a problem, we ask, who's responsible? That's a mistake. Why? Because uh, he's responsible, but maybe he can do nothing. He has no authority, no resources, doesn't know what he's what is going on, but is responsible. When you want to correct a problem, look at my hand, please. Look at my hand. One finger is looking for that person, you. One finger is showing God. That's out of control. It happened. And three fingers are pointing to the culprit. No. Ah. I never give them information. They have no authority. They have no resources. But I point to that person as responsible. First, we have to solve these three fingers. And then this one. What is it that I need? We need uh, the problem to be identified, not the person who has the responsibility. There is a, pers a person with authority. When I changed Bank of America, it was the largest bank in the United States. And the president said, start with the American division and then we'll see what happens at the international level. So we analyzed, there were many problems and I said, why don't you solve them? Who's resp you're responsible, you're the authority. Where is the authority? Ah, he said, in the president. All right. And so I went to him, you have the problems. And he said, no, 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 they are responsible. But the others cannot solve the problem. So you either take up the problem or give the authority to that person to solve the problem. Authority. So what is it that I need? Who has the authority to decide? Who can sabotage the solution? It can be sabotaged. For example, unions. Oh, the big ones make decisions, and uh, the unions will have to accept. Bring them in. Don't leave them outside. What else do we need? Those who can sabotage have no authority. Those who have authority have no power to implement because they have the capacity uh, to implement and therefore they have power. Other people have no knowledge of, uh, uh, of the topic. Those who know have no power. Those who have power have no authority. Those who have authority know nothing about what's going on. So bring them all together. That can be solved at the level of a country. How many Brazilians do we have here? Raise your hands. How many Brazilians? You know that Gomes Carvalho, I certified him. He was the minister for Enrique Cardoso. And I worked with him to stop inflation in Brazil. I asked him, how did you manage Oh, the problem of inflation is not an economic problem. It's a political problem. The unions say this. The Minister of Finance says that. The Central Bank says the other thing. And that is the problem, how to bring them together. What do you mean by together? In order to implement, what is it that you need? You need a common interest. If there is no common interest, it will not work. So where is the common interest? Why is it that you want to solve? Sometimes there is no such thing as common interest. They are always quarreling. So what should you do? You have to cause from outside. Um, push them to a common interest. For example, my two 
youngest kids, when they were very young, the two of them were fighting. I was reading the Sunday morning paper and I heard them, hey, you, these are, they're going to kill one another. I said, what's going on? This silophone, silophone, I want this silophone. No, it's mine. No, it's mine. No, it's mine. And they were about to kill one another over this silophone. There was no common interest. So I will cause it, I said. Give me the silophone. None, none of you will have it. Go to the bathroom, stay inside, and don't come out until you solve the problem. Do you know how long it took them? Oh, this sounds bullshit. But it worked. As director, uh, if the vice presidents of your company are having a fight on the budget, by fighting, none of you will solve the problem. Send them to the bathroom, close the door, and ask them to solve the problem. I control them, but they too will solve it. So they have a joint interest and uh, a common interest and that's it. So we need to find common grounds. Where does the problem lie now? There is no common ground. Why? All right. I've, I, I, I'm a professor. I can't uh, speak if I'm, uh, if, I, if I don't speak for an hour and a half. I'm sorry if I'm running out of time. <laughs> well, well, uh, in, 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 in marriage, there are also different interests in, in companies that are different. And that's why there is a conflict. Conflict is something normal. Listen to me carefully. It's normal. More changes, more conflicts. I was talking with the minister of mining, and, uh, and she said, be careful, I said. Be careful, Uruguay. You have a very good uh, living conditions. There are not many conflicts. Uh, it's good. Uh, come on, let's go ahead. There are changes and changes. What's going to happen? Uh, since I'm short of time, I'm going to hurry up now. Now, to be healthy, we have to be effective and efficient, and uh, that's why we need four roads. I haven't got, uh, I've only got 10 minutes for this. <laughs> this is important. There is no one that can be perfect. No one is perfect. There is no perfect son, no perfect father, no perfect wife. No one is perfect in this world. Why? Because there are changes. It was perfect for 15 minutes, then it was no longer perfect. <laughs> Not that clear. That doesn't exist. This doesn't exist. A manager, a self-oriented, organized, efficient, systemized with a strategic outlook, risk taker, creative innovator, team builder. And so on. If, I, if you're in doubt, I'll tell you a joke. An old lady goes to a butcher to buy a chicken, and he says, and she says, mm. and then the butcher looks at her, and she said, and asks, "Can you pass this exam?" Let's see. You, 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 you. What about you? Nobody is perfect, please. Perfection doesn't exist. So what do we need? We need a team. A marriage is a complementary team. No, you married someone who is strong. You fell in love with your weakness, which is the strength of the other person. And what's going to happen? This is a book to be read. <laughs> what's going to happen? I am right out of time. This 
that's that's uh, what why what I call them intel intellectual. I, I, no, 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 I haven't got time. Oh, come on, come on. Well, all right. How do you make decisions? Look, personality. That's a P type. It's already decided. It doesn't know what, but it's already decided. <laughs> Be bright, but never in doubt. Come on. T type A. Someone thinks and thinks and thinks. I know. Well, come on. Type A. I've got an idea. Look what happens. Each one has is in a different level of decision. So what's going to happen? We need these four roles. We need a complementary team. But the styles are different. So what's going to happen? Conflict. Now, what do many people do not to have problems? Well, they stop changes. And that's the worst they can do. What should we do? We have to learn that conflicts must not be destructive. That's the thing. And you can be constructive, and there is a way out. Destructive is, is automatic. Don't do anything. It's destructive simply because time passes. Things never stay the same. Things either are better or worse. Now, if you don't do anything, things will get worse. The best car in the world, $200,000 for that car. Don't drive it. Don't do anything. After two years, what do you think is going to happen with the car? Well, well, there's time has passed, changes. To, to be constructive, you have to get off your ass and do something. What should you do? Look for success. Look for the exit. What's this? NTLA. Look at that. What is it? Since there is no common ground, common interest, how can I make it? How can, what can I do? You must trust reciprocally, mutual trust. When there is trust, things solve themselves. We'll work it out. Common trust. To make it constructive, we, we are different. That's fine. I can learn from your differences. I can do, I can learn from what you're different and uh, think, uh, what do you know that I don't? Teach me. And if you teach me, I can teach you. And so we're going to have synergy. Two and three is not five, it's seven. We've learned it's synergy and symbiosis. We need the two. What is it that we need? This word is very important, the most important word, mutual. Mutual trust and respect. <coughs> If there is respect and trust and it's reciprocal, the marriage works out, the company works out, the country works out. When there is no respect and no trust, reciprocally, just wait for time to destroy everything. Now, what's the advantage that the U.S. has? Why is it that it's become an empire? Because there was mutual respect and trust. Why is it that the U.S. is losing that? Well, it's losing reciprocal and mutual trust and respect. Are you listening, Uruguay? I'm talking to you. All right. Formula of success? That's it. The secret for success for any country or or company, or marriage, or an individual, doesn't matter, is a function of external integration divided into internal disintegration. What's external integration? 
it's what we call strategic planning, marketing, and uh, and we have to need the needs of the market and the capacities we've got and what product to meet the needs of uh, in the part of the market and share and so on. That's external. What is internal disintegration? Respect and mutual respect and trust. If there is no respect and no trust, and it's not reciprocal, there is a lot of waste of time and energy. Energy is fixed. When you quarrel with your wife in the morning, you can't work until midday. Because your mind is busy. Uh, divorce, you can't work for three years because you're worried. That is, energy is first going to be this integration. If there is any surplus, then it goes to external integration. And what's the success of a company to minimize the, dis in the internal disintegration, emancipate energy, and that goes to the external, but how, how is it caught? What happens inside? The subsystems are disintegrating, right? Right? So what should you do? You integrate inside, well, these are the causes, mutual trust and uh, respect, these are the four functions, and to develop mutual trust and respect. Not to talk about, it's to do it. Do it. How to work together, how to make decisions collectively. Common values, the correct uh, organizational structure, correct structure. Everything is network organization and, and please, structure has to be clear to uh, carry out your vision. And leaders, what's a good leader? That there is trust and respect. If there is no trust or respect, it's worth nothing. I've got 25, 26 books, so well, this is one. Now what's happened here? Let's see, okay. Mm. Okay, look here. These arrows, you integrate your emancipating energy to take it out. You make changes outside, and so this causes internal disintegration when you fix it and it goes out. So to conclude, no company should work in that way. It should grow in that way. Now we are growing by 30%. And the question is, when are you going to go bankrupt? Why? Because to develop a company, it's like build a house with many floors. You have a foundation for three, for five, for six, for seven. And what's going to happen? The foundation structure, uh, information, all that must be fixed. Now, you, when once you set it, you move on. You grow and you fix, you fix and you grow. So you work during the day, you sleep at night. What does it happen at night? It's integration. There are companies that don't sleep at night. They must sleep. They must be integrated to make internal integration. That's why you need complementary teams. One is in charge of the external part, the other one of the internal part. And together, they manage the company. What's the secret? The, the asset, activo. The most important asset of organization of any organization, of a people, of a country, of a marriage, doesn't matter. In the case of business, 
the most important asset of an organization is not shown in, on any balance sheet. It's not in the profit and loss accounts. You can't buy it. You can't sell it. You have to develop and manage it. What is it? It's the culture of the organization. If you're a good manager and a leader, it's not because you know. You know you are. You know who you are. The most important thing is that we don't realize that. We don't realize it. The most important is the organizational culture. That's where the energy lies. I know companies that have technology, that have a market that is dying for their products. If you have technology and market, you have it, and they are going bankrupt. Now, how can that be? Well, the partners are quarreling. They don't have the time to look outside. To conclude, please, the most important thing to have success, to be successful in your company, is uh, whenever there is mutual trust and respect. Thank you.